TypeScript is growing every day and your database should be growing with it. Let's talk about it. What's up everyone? My name is James Hugh Quick and I do weekly videos on web development related topics. And one of the hottest topics right now, I think at least in the recent months and then at least in the recent year or two is the growth of TypeScript. Now JavaScript is you know ubiquitous because of all the different ways that we can use it from front end to back end to IoT to native applications to all these different things. And then on top of that now is TypeScript. And so if you're looking for jobs, if you're looking for your next job in the web development space, I highly recommend looking into TypeScript because we're seeing this more and more on different job requirements and postings, et cetera. So now might be your time to look into TypeScript. And if you already have, or if you're getting into it, one of the things that also becomes important is how to integrate TypeScript with your database. Now, quick question before we get into this is what is your current database setup? I'd love to know that in the comments below and specifically to address if there's any integration with TypeScript. Do you have anything that can automatically generate your types for you? Are you manually creating types or maybe you're not using TypeScript at all? But let me know what your database setup is, your favorite one if you use several different ones. Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to see and hear what you're using and maybe take that into account in future videos. Now the struggle is if you wanna access TypeScript types in your code that represent the data that is in your database, how do you keep those two in sync? So in a second, I'll show you an example of something, a workflow that I wish I could improve or I need to improve in a personal project for the Learn, Build, Teach Discord that you can find at learnbuildteach.com. And then I'll show you an example from Zeta that helps solve that issue and have all this stuff be really in sync. So I have a Discord bot. This is a super fun project. It's with Node.js and it uses the Discord JS to listen for commands and to do different things. But I have a Discord bot for the Learn, Build, Teach Discord. And you can see inside of here, I have my types file and then all of these different uh, interfaces that I define for the different data models for my database. So the problem with this is as I go and update a data model, for example, in my database, my code is now out of sync, which means I could potentially have errors. I could potentially have missing data. I could potentially try to query something that I don't have knowledge that it exists, or I could have changed the name in the database and by querying the old name in the front end could get an error, et cetera. So I would really want those two things to be in sync. And right now this is a very manual process. I go and make a change in the database and then I have to come to the file and add whatever different thing I want to track about this share, whatever that is, like super cool property, cooler property, whatever. So I have to add that, then I have to deploy my code and it's out there. So the process is manual of going from database to my TypeScript. Now the difference here or the kind of feature that I want to highlight for Zeta, which is a pretty amazing database, is the code gen feature and the fact that their SDKs are kind of already configured to work with TypeScript. Now this is a sponsored video with Zeta, but it's been one of my favorite database options over the last several months since they went out of beta a few months, several months ago. And I did a video on them and, and kind of calling out some of their features that you can check out if you're interested. I've also done a couple of tutorials with building an API in Node.js and TypeScript with Zeta, again, those being a natural fit. So quick overview here. This is a job ta table that has a few different properties that you would expect, the link to the job, the company name, the title, et cetera. And this is really just for demo purposes, but it is an example database. So one of the cool things that Zeta has in here is a playground where I can go and query data in JavaScript slash TypeScript right inside of here to be able to like test things out, which is pretty neat without having to set up an entirely separate project. And if you look, if I hover on the get uh, paginated here after accessing the job table, you can see that it responds back with some types. This may be a little hard to read, but you can see that it references the job record in there. So I already have types with this SDK closely aligned to the actual data uh, that's in my database or the model that is representing the data in my database. And so inside of my code for this example project, I have a couple of things. I have a Zeta configuration file, a Zeta RC file, and this has a reference to what the database is that we're working with. And then we have this code gen with an output folder where it's telling it where we're gonna save this Zeta file. So what happens here that I think is really, really neat is we can run a Zeta code gen. It's gonna go and look at what the database is, what the data models are, and then it's gonna generate in TypeScript a client file, including all of the different types that we can work with in our data. Again, this automatic syncing basically, or I guess you have to trigger a command, but it automatically generates the code for you 
that then is now our data in TypeScript and our data inside of Zeta, data and Zeta, data and TypeScript are in sync, which is pretty nice. So after this generates this, it generates a lot of code in here, none of which you have to change manually, but it generates the Zeta client that gets exported that you can just import and use directly or through the get Zeta client here. Also has a little bit of kind of a singleton pattern here. If you're new to that, you can go and look up what a singleton pattern is, but to be able to access that instance of the Zeta client. And then most importantly, or most relevantly, is it kind of defines in code these tables. And so this is the job table and here are the columns. And then it infers the types from that to create uh, the job and the job record. So this inferred types here is basically going to kind of infer what that type is in TypeScript, and then we can export that thing and work in it. Which means now inside of my code, and this is an API endpoint back from a tutorial that I did a while back that you can go watch for more details. I can have things like in jobs API endpoint, and then go and query all of these jobs. And again, if I hover on get all, you can see that this returns a job record. So then I can define inside of my response going uh, from the API back to the user or the website that called it, I can clarify this is the type of data that I'm going to respond with, which is a, an array of jobs. And you see that here. Again, hover here, you get the types here to see what all you're returning. And that's automatically generated using the cogen function inside of Zeta. So I think that databases have a long way to go. I think databases have traditionally been kind of older, kind of lacking modern features, but things are starting to really change. And we've seen this across the board with a lot of different tools. And one of the things that I do think is really important is this integration with TypeScript as it grows in popularity. So it's really cool for me to see this cogen functionality that automatically generates code that I don't have to think about, but after that code generation is in sync versus me having to manually go and update types and models and things in my code, which is just not as much fun to keep things in sync. So I'm curious what you think about this. Have you tried out Zeta and then the Cogen functionality or are there any other tools that you really enjoy to do something similar? Let me know in the comments below, but hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you next time.